I hope you remember your first test is on Wednesday, day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so bring the scantron. Uh, we'll <coughs> complete chapter three in about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll review for the test. So I, I hope you are prepared for the test. You have many questions for me. Scantron B, right? Bring a scantron B, B, bring a calculator. Okay, you will need a calculator. Uh, okay, uh, what we are doing is uh, financial analysis. Uh, you know, uh, one of the jobs that finance majors perform uh, is uh, uh, evaluating the performance of a firm. Right? Uh, who needs this evaluation? Well, lenders could need this evaluation. Okay, banks, for example, JCPenney has uh, lines of credit uh, with multiple banks. What's a line of credit? It's a standby borrowing arrangement, okay, under which you can go to uh, go to your bank and borrow up to a certain amount of money during the next 12 month period. So it's called a line of credit. Most businesses have a standby line of credit. So they have a ready source of cash available. Okay? So your banks, you know, so JCPenney goes to, goes to its bank and says, hey, uh, please approve me for up to $50 million worth of credit. So they will say, okay, you know, provide us your statements and answer some of our questions and we'll be happy to, you know, see, you know, uh, whether we can do that or not. So banks hire, you know, uh, finance majors to be credit analysts, okay? So they do the same things that we are doing. They, they, they go into more <coughs> details, of course, okay? Who else? Well, shareholders, if you want to invest in JCPenney right now, the stock is worth about a dollar. It used to be worth $30, you know, a few years back. So. Uh, you want to take a look at their historical performance, where they are going, uh, what their problems are, and whether those problems are fixable, or whether Jesse Penny is going to be out of business very soon. Okay, so you can see that there are multiple stakeholders who have interest in evaluating, you know, a firm, or what the firm is doing, and things of that sort. So here, what we are using is what we call ratio analysis. What is ratio analysis? Ratio analysis involves constructing ratios, okay, financial ratios, to evaluate a firm's performance. So that's what we do, construct ratios. We don't deal with raw numbers. We don't, we don't say, hey, JCPenney sales you know, were $5 billion last year. That's meaningless to us. Okay, so we, we take the sales, JCPenney sales, and divide by some other reasonable, you know, number <laughs> to, uh, to evaluate, you know, JCPenney sales, as I said, per square foot of store space, you know. That's one way to do it. And then we have benchmarks, you know, standards, and we use industry benchmarks for what we call cross-sectional comparisons. And we also look at time series trend, you know, over time, how has JCPenney been performing? So, uh, so uh, here, uh, and this could also serve as a review for you. Okay, so, um, so uh, you know, ask any questions that you have. I, I may not go back to review it one more time, but uh, what what types of questions can I ask you uh, uh, from this chapter? Well. Uh, Maybe you will see a couple of questions on constructing ratios. I'll provide you the formulas, but and the financial, some financial numbers. So you'll have to use, you know, the relevant financial numbers to construct those ratios. So that's one very. And then I could ask you uh, a question on um, in interpreting, you know, a ratio. What does this ratio mean? You know. Uh, then I could ask you some questions on cross-sectional. And time series comparisons, that's what we have been doing, you know, using Excel, cross-sectional, comparing JCPenney's ratio to the industry average and finding out whether JCPenney is better than or worse than, you know, the standard, you know. Uh, 
so and some conceptual questions like uh, there are four groups of ratios why four groups of ratios because each group you know addresses a specific aspect of firm performance for example the first group is a liquidity group uh, what is this group about what question does this group help us answer you have all those questions here mm -hmm. so the question is can jc penny pay its bills because if it doesn't if it's not able to pay its bills uh, over the next 12 month period it's going to go bankrupt okay so so if if you are a potential shareholder don't be going there <laughs> If you are a potential lender, don't be lending money to JCPenney anymore. So are they able to pay their bills? Okay. So we constructed two ratios, so current ratio. The formulas will be given. As I said, I'm not requiring that you memorize these formulas. OK, so the idea is a current. So the numerator contains um, you know, financial assets, not cash. You know, cash plus inventory plus you know, receivables. Okay. That's what the numerator contains. Uh, current ratio, current assets, and you divide by bills, and bills are represented by current liabilities. So bills, uh, and uh, uh, so over bills you have, um, you know, those uh, uh, financial assets that will help you pay your bills. Okay. So you want this number, uh, you want to take a look at this number and compare it to the industry average. So, uh, and I'll show you the show you the Excel you know, work that we have done so far. This one here, the second group, it helps us answer this question, which is, hey, are, is JCPenney using too much debt, long-term debt, is what we are talking about? And the answer is gonna be yes, okay? Are they using too much debt to survive in the long run? These, these are long-term loans, okay? So as long as you pay interest uh, this year, you are okay. But next year, that's a different story. Because oh, what if all of a sudden JCPenney sales slump because, you know, people are buying less and less, you know, uh, in, in, in those uh, brick and mortar stores, they're, they're buying online. Uh, and, and so uh, it's, a, it's a very fast moving industry and the industry as a whole is declining. So, so, so the more debt you have, the more trouble you could be in, you know. I hope none of you has, has borrowed more than, you know, uh, you can afford, but imagine, you know, you have, you have a car loan, you have a home loan, and on top of it, you lose your job, and what are you going to do? W what will happen? Well, you know what will happen. Uh, the, uh, banks, are, banks have no sympathy for you, and, and your car dealer has no sympathy for you. So he will come in and repossess the car, and, and the bank will come in and foreclose on your house. So, so, this is the, so the same thing will happen in the case of J.C. Penney. You know, they'll file for bankruptcy and, and see where things go. So long-term, uh, you know, long-term loans, loans, loans uh, uh, that are longer than a year, okay? Banks give you short-term loans, you know, for a month, two months, six months, up to a year. Long-term loans, uh, generally banks don't make long-term loans. Uh, so you go, to, you, you, you go to outsiders, individuals, big institutions that lend you uh, money over the long run. So we constructed these ratios. So if I ask you to construct any of these ratios, I'll give you the formula. But make sure you practice, you know. If you ask me, Professor, can you tell me uh, where total liabilities are, for example? I will say, I'm sorry, you know, you have the numbers in front of you. So, you know, try to find out, you know, where total liabilities are. Or if you tell me, can you give me, can you help me find owner's equity, you know, on the balance sheet? My answer is going to be, I don't know, you know, at this time. So you want to, you know, uh, make sure that you give yourself some practice at least. You know, we are doing this spreadsheet for the same reason, too, so that, you know, before the test, you go over the spreadsheet one more time and see, okay, what's this ratio? Even if the formula is given to me, can I go to the balance sheet and find find owner's equity or shareholder's equity or net worth or, or current liabilities or total liabilities. That's your job only, okay? Uh, and then the third uh, group is, is JCPenney using its assets efficiently? What does it mean? It means, you know, they have perhaps even now they have close to a thousand stores, maybe more, <laughs> I, I've, I've forgotten. You know, they, they shut down many stores. And many of these stores may not be profitable. Many of these stores 
are probably not producing as much in sales as JCPenney needs to justify the existence of those stores. So in that case, you know, maybe JCPenney is not using its assets efficiently. Okay? So that's what the purpose is. Hey, are your assets producing enough in sales, enough in profits, enough in uh, you know, uh, cash flows? And, and you constructed these ratios inventory. Is, it, is your inventory, is your investment in inventory producing you know, a large enough sales? <laughs> And uh, this is accounts receivable. Are your, are your accounts receivable? Are, do you have control over your accounts receivable? And this is total asset turnover. So, so, uh, so now you know each one of these. And, uh, and then uh, 